Hello. In this video, we look at what does it actually physically mean, this number that we get out for the line integral. This video will attack the viewpoint of the function being a scalar function. So to remember, uh, to know what a line integral does, you have to go back and remember what a regular integral did for you. You had an interval in the xy plane, and what you did with that is you chopped it into subintervals. And then at each of those sub intervals, you found the place where you went to evaluate your function and it represent an area when you multiplied the change in the, the, um, the X by the height. Well, imagine that interval on the X axis now being on a curve. You're going to still chop up into sub intervals, but now your pieces are not parts of the x-axis your pieces are parts of the curve it'll be up to us to parameterize that curve and then what we're measuring is just like above we're going to go to each little sub interval pick a place and at that place go up and evaluate the function the function is a multivariable function of x and y so it's a three-dimensional surface and we go up and evaluate the function each time. And what we'll be accumulating is an area, but not your standard kind of area. I like to call it the fence area or shower curtain area. I guess curtain would suffice. Why shower? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Okay, great. So we've got an idea. Okay, and the function of x and y goes inside. What about this ds? Well, when you parameterize the curve, you have x as a function of t and y as a function of t. And ds is going to be the square root of the um, dx dt squared and the dy dt squared added up. All multiplied by dt. Let's look at some more um, hopefully helpful visuals. We have um, this particular drawing is straight from Wikipedia. It's representing our scalar function uh, line integral. Uh, the square represents, um, the colors represent different altitudes of a multivariable function, the f of x, y. The orange and red are high altitudes. The blue and purple are low altitudes. They're even below the x, y plane. And this video will be helpful um, to you, hopefully, to, to actually see what it is that you're measuring. All right, so f is this function turned on its so if we have a curve c and we're going to turn this on its side to see c lifted up to our surface and now this last piece is it just it gets turned into a single variable integral when you're all done and so this is us stretching it out and conceiving of it as a single variable integral okay that's much better than anything i can draw and so uh, let's let's work it out for a particular example. Our multivariable function of x and y is going to be y squared plus 2. The missing z and the missing x give us this sort of parabolic cylinder type of shape. Um, z equals y squared plus 2. The x is missing. And so the uh, it's elongated in the x direction. It's a parabola. Z equals y squared. But it's x can be anything you want it to be. And we're above the curve, C. It looks like a, a circle. Okay, not a unit circle, but we have a circle there, C. And so chop, our, chop into sub intervals, and each of those lines represent different altitudes. And, and then we could come across and we can draw in a rectangle, sum up all those, and we get this, this uh, line integral's value. Uh, we have to parameterize that curve. Let's say that curve has a radius of 2. So we talked about it in a previous video. Let x equal 2 cosine t and y equal 2 sine t. Let t go from 0 to 2 pi. You have your parameterization. Okay. And we're going to go get ds on the next slide because we have to take x prime and square it. We have to take y prime and square it. We have to add those up and then take a square root. Well, let's do that on the next slide. So you have our general um, scalar function surface integral. We have our function. We have our parameterization. 
These guys are the g of t and h of t that we talked about before. We have that t goes between 0 and 2 pi. Here are the steps. Your first job is to rewrite your function so that you only consider points that are above the curve. And so how you do that is you're going to rip out all the x's in your function and replace them with 2 cosine t. Rip out all the y's in your function, replace them with 2 sine t. It's the rewriting of f on c. But for us, there's just a y. Rip out y and put in its place sine 2 sine t, and we have to square that. That's 4 sine squared t. That's your function. Restrict it to only like be those points that are above the curve. In, in the animation there, it's the, uh, it's the curve who gets lifted up, and you have these function. This function here is now evaluated not as a function of x and y, but as a function of t. Okay, so after, after getting that, your next step should be then to be able to write uh, an expression for a ds. And here's the formula for it. So we take derivatives. We have, we have x and y. So we take x prime and y prime, or, or g prime and h prime. So we have negative 2 sine t for the g prime, or x prime. And we have 2 cosine t for the y prime, or h prime. These guys get squared, and they get added, and then you take a square root. What's nice is we get a nice uh, sine squared plus cosine squared. Um, and that's a 1. And so it's really the square root of 4 times 1, or square root of 4 dt. So it's really ds is equal to twice dt. What do we do with these two elements from the first bullet point and the second bullet point? Well, we put them together. In the third bullet point, we're going to write the integral as a single variable, back to calc 1, integral of a single variable. That single variable is your parameter t. You know the bounds. It's a definite integral. We're going to get a number out of it. The bounds are the t bounds. We're going to rip out the x and put, oh, we already done that. We have the x uh, ripped out. Well, there's no x to rip out. We would put in 2 cosine t. We have the y ripped out. We put in 2 sine t. So that function f goes in there. The ds gets multiplied by it. And we're just a single variable, calc 1 integral. You got to remember how to calculate sine squared by ripping it out and putting in the half angle identity, 1 half the quantity of 1 minus cosine of 2t. Okay, and then we go from 0 to 2 pi. We can multiply that out. It'll be 2, and then it'll be um, minus cosine 2t, and then there's the other plus 2 at the end there. Uh, why did I also pull out a 2? Oh, the 2 comes from, uh, sorry, the 2 comes from ds. I'm like, where's that other 2 come from? Uh, the 2 comes from ds, being twice dt. Okay, great. Um, and then we're going to integrate, or oh, distribute, uh, and then put the two twos together. Integrate, we get 4t, and then the antiderivative of negative 2 cosine 2t is just sine 2t. 2 from the outside, put a 2 pi in, put a 0 in. Uh, 0 gives you 0. Um, the 2 pi gives you 0 for the sine part, but not for the first part. Um, it would be 8 pi, the 4 times the 2 pi. And then the 2 from the outside, the answer is 16 pi. Okay. That would be the sort of curtain area um, above the circle that we had calculated on uh, the... Sorry, let me just show you the picture of what we just calculated. We calculated that area to be um, 16 pi all the way around. I only have the first part kind of ruled out, but uh, this is the exact area too. It's not an approximation at all. All right, great. So in the next video, we'll look at the other viewpoint, and that's where we're going to spend most of our time at, having a vector function, a vector field, and then uh, dying that with dr, which is the derivative of our path. All right, my name is Nikai Rimmer. Helping you through this calculus journey, multivariable calculus, and uh, please comment down below, uh, like and subscribe, and uh, reach out to me if you need help. I have a workbook full of resources. Please take advantage of them, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.